Welcome to the Geek Home World. I am your host, Ed, aka Savage Tech Man. We talk sci fi, TV, movies, superheroes, and all from a geek perspective. You can find us on Blogger, Google, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. We're everywhere. Join the Geek Home World. Hello, this is Ed, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Geek Home World, your place to get your geek on. We're located at Geek Home World on several platforms. We're now on YouTube, and we're going to be doing some more things with the YouTube channel. Thank you for the followers. Thank you for all the listeners continuing here in our third year of podcasting, talking about those geeky things that you want to hear about please follow us on twitter at geek homeworld give us some feedback let us know what you think about the episodes what you want to hear thank you so much for joining us i've really never been conflicted so much about a movie as i have about the one that i'm going to speak about and that's justice league my initial impressions this is this is what really conflicts me in the sense that I liked it and I didn't. There were things, there were pros and cons, and so I pretty much tried to make a list here, and this is probably not all inclusive of everything that is a pro and everything that is a con in the movie. So there are things that disturbed me about it, things that I loved, and things I didn't like, a lot of questions that were just left up in the air, I feel like in such a need to erase what is widely perceived as a misstep or bad movie, Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, that they overcorrected, I think, in some ways. And in some ways, they just totally left out stuff that really were great plot points that should have been explored even further in Justice League. So we're going to start with this conflicted movie, Justice League. Did I like it overall impression? I enjoyed it. Would I see it again? Yes. I had friends on Facebook and other mediums ask me, should I go see it? What do you think? And... I would say yes, and I did say yes after a little trepidation because I am conflicted about this movie. I wanted so much for this movie to be so great, and in some ways there were improvements, but in some ways it's just, eh, you know, it's it's there. But I know I'm going to probably upset some people on either side of the argument there. And and I hate that there has to be an argument. There was so much negativity around Batman versus Superman. And that is still a movie to this day, the ultimate edition, which is like the three hour version, I think fleshed out the story much better. And, you know, we had two different directors on this one because of situations the first director had to jump off the production and you know unfortunately that 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 transcends of course anything in the movie industry you know family is the most important thing and the project as important as it is is still not as important as what is happening in your real life so nobody's mad at the directors there's not been as much backlash for having two separate directors on this movie With Josh Whedon coming in, I really feel the mood had already been lightened up somewhat versus Batman versus Superman on Justice League going in. So the other thing was Josh Whedon, I think, really lightened up some of the reshoots that he did. But let's look at some of the pros of it. Synopsis there is go see it. If you can see it in a matinee, that's great. I wouldn't necessarily say... Like Thor Ragnarok was totally different. And I'm not trying to compare the two universes, Marvel versus DC, but Thor Ragnarok was just such a wonderful, refreshing take on a superhero movie. Basically, it was a comedy, even a buddy comedy to an extent, with uh, Hulk and 
Thor. And so if I had to choose movies, I would still see Justice League because it's been a lifelong dream to see these heroes up on the screen. One of my biggest things against this, well, we'll I probably I'm going to go ahead and just mention a con on this one is there's no Martian Manhunter. Now, I knew there wasn't going to be. And, you know, if you know me, I like Martian Manhunter. I think the character is done well on Smallville, really well on Smallville, but good on Supergirl. So, you know, DC, in the end, I think DC has done a great job, or very good job at least, on the Flash, Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow. So on TV, DC's got it down. Marvel, I lost track of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., though some people still are following the show. I just kind of got behind a little bit on it, and I intended to binge watch to get caught up, and then I just, I don't know, I lost interest. Now if I go back, I'll probably find some gems in there. But anyway, I don't want to go too much off on a tangent here, but the reason me saying all of that was to say that the Arrowverse or Flashpoint on TV is more along the lines of, I think they got it right. Especially the last episode of the flash as of the recording of this was, uh, with uh, against the thinker, which was very well done. Now the episode with the elongated man was possibly one of the worst flash episodes ever. Most boring, overuse of a character, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm not going to go off on that tangent, okay? That's for another time. So let's talk Justice League. Some of the pros were the lighter tone versus what we saw in Batman versus Superman. One of the big things here is Superman smiles. He finally is that hope. And I know there's been reviews that say, you know, in this movie... We didn't see that hope, but I I felt that lightness, that lightness of spirit when Superman... Oh, and by the way, I should have said this is full of spoilers, so if you've not seen Justice League, come back later once you have, and compare and contrast my thoughts on Justice League. So, But the death of Superman was epic, and the resurrection or rebirth or whatever of Superman was really rushed. I thought I I felt that they were at a breakneck speed to keep this movie going. Let's have as many explosions, as much CGI as we could throw at this thing. When there's weak plot points, we'll cover them. That's kind of a con there. We'll just cover it with special effects and big explosions. And, you know, I get what the movie is and sometimes that works, but you know, I want a deeper story. I want stories fleshed out. You know, we got in the trailer, and this this is a con here, and I don't mean to skip around a little bit, but hopefully you'll follow me on my train of thought here. But some of the scenes that were cut were upsetting to me in the movie, and that's definitely a con, okay? You know, some of the stuff we saw in the trailer we didn't see in the actual movie. Now, the movie, the runtime on this was like an hour, 59 minutes, just around two hours, so it was roughly about 30 minutes less than Batman versus Superman, which is good. It didn't feel like a long movie when I watched it. It was enjoyable. It was great to see the heroes come together, and I think the Flash was one of the standout characters in there, done really well, even though there were some deleted scenes like him pushing his finger through the glass, and that never was in the movie. That scene, some of the cool stuff was left out. There was Cyborg, who was an interesting addition to the Justice League, and he should be there, and I'm, I think nothing wrong with the performance. I just felt that they really just skimmed over the entire origin story and i know we may depending how the box office which wasn't good uh by industry standards or by what dc was hoping for it didn't even break 100 million one of the lowest openings for this dc extended universe or as they're calling it just now the dcu and i know box office and dollars mean everything but honestly i want quality and I don't know necessarily that we got the best that we should have got. I felt that this movie was chopped up in a lot of ways. There were problems I had with it. 
And uh, I know I keep going to the cons here, but I'm trying to do the pros first. So let's try to stick with that. But just to finish up on talking about the origin story of Cyborg. I mean, I think Cyborg is a fascinating character and the fact that we really didn't get much of that origin story on him. We just It was just kind of assumed that you already knew. You know, I could understand the Flash because, yes, everybody knows the origin story at this point of the Flash, but not everybody in the general public knows about Cyborg. He's a relatively newer character to the universe. So... It was good to see, and, and I enjoyed the performances. I There were more performances, like there was the guy, one of the things that were cut from the movie, one of the scenes was Jimmy Olsen, who was in the Superman movies with Christopher Reeve, he's actually in Supergirl also, so he actually appeared in more of the Superman movies than Christopher Reeve did. You know, he was in all three of them, plus he was in Superman 1, 1, 2, and 3, and Supergirl, so technically he was in four of them. But he was the cop that was right there when Cyborg, this police car or whatever, was blowing up or whatever, and he's like, you should move back, Cyborg says to him, and that was the cop. And, you know, so that was cut from there. And that would have been a cool thing to have him on screen, you know, so... I'm sure we'll get an extended cut, and I'll probably end up liking the... If there's an ultimate edition or extended cut of Justice League, I'll probably like it more, just like I did with Batman vs. Superman. With Batman vs. Superman was really three story arcs put in one movie, and it felt very long. And there were, you know, we could pick that movie apart. I still defend it. And I was still on board, though, with a lighter tone. And and I definitely saw how that lighter tone worked in Marvel. They have, obviously, a lighter tone. Hardly anybody really dies in that universe. But we saw it in Thor Ragnarok. Had they continued after the sequel, Thor and the sequel uh, there, had they continued along that line, I do not feel... That I, I know for a fact that this third Thor movie, Ragnarok, would not have been that good. But from the early things, I could see the Guardians of the Galaxy comedic, even just in how it was done. And in different director, you get different styles. And it totally, totally worked. And this is what DC was going for, a lighter tone with Justice League. And I appreciate them listening to the fans and the reaction. But Batman versus Superman... There was all this pent up to see this storyline told with an older seasoned Batman, which Ben Affleck did a spectacular job as Batman. I mean, I I don't have any complaints. I don't think hardly anybody does for Batman versus Superman. But in Justice League, there's even talk that Ben Affleck was just kind of there and he was just kind of a watered down Batman. He, He tried to be more friendly as Bruce Wayne and and more comical to an extent, but it didn't really work as well. And as of the recording of this, there is serious talk that Ben Affleck is going to leave the franchise. And so there is a long list of who's going to be the next Batman, because you know they're going to continue Batman. Batman as a franchise, as a solo franchise movie, it has decades left in it. I mean, you know, there are so many villains they haven't even talked about. And, you know, the Joker movie, the origin movie would be very interesting to see. And uh, I'm on board for Leonardo DiCaprio doing it. He may be a little bit older, but I don't know. I feel like we need a younger Joker, but I'm interested to see it. I'm not a fan of Jared Leto's Joker. I know some people are, and I, and I get that. But it just Suicide Squad didn't turn me on that much. Kind of turned me off, in fact. Now, back to Justice League, where comparing Batman versus Superman, and that's and that's the thing is maybe we shouldn't compare them as much, but it's it's hard not to compare them because Dawn of Justice sets up Justice League, so we kind of have to compare those movies. We're supposed to. And we can't say that these are just standalone, you know? And Justice League had that lighter tone. All of the characters. Wonder Woman 
one of the pros of this movie. And I was worried because after the runaway success of the solo Wonder Woman movie, and it was interesting to see where we were going with Wonder Woman. Would she be more subdued or would she be a leader? And what's interesting is basically if you look at, and I think Cheryl has said this before, is basically, so Wonder Woman just sat out all of World War II and the rise of Hitler and all that. She could have prevented that or helped fight against it. And maybe we'll find out in Wonder Woman 2 or whatever the sequel's name will be. Maybe we'll see a progression in the storyline from that, even though I think it's supposed to be in modern times, so they may just skip over that. But I think they kind of touch on that in Justice League and the fact that she really wasn't, Batman really, or Bruce or whatever, really challenges Wonder Woman. There's a point where she just kind of like uses a little bit of force and like pushes him away. And she says she was kind of mad at him because she was talking about losing Steve Trevor, not moving on. And those were some of the interesting interpersonal relationships that build the story that we needed to see more of, just like the way that Diana... And Cyborg, how they got her and Victor, how Diana and Victor interacted with people. And she basically came in and kind of recruited, was sent to recruit him. So I wanted to see more of that. And then Victor being the kind of, you know, what am I? And I, this technology is taking me over. I can't control it. You know, very interesting story arcs. We can go with that with Cyborg. And I'm sure in the future they'll, they'll explore that more, hopefully in a a solo movie, I would go see it, definitely. But the thing is, when we're talking about this, we're talking about Diana and Bruce, and he basically says, well, why aren't you a leader? And she realizes that it's time for her to step up. She's never kind of looked at herself, even though she's from a warrior race of females, she never really looked at herself as a leader as such. She just felt she was, I loved her optimism. Everyone loved the optimism that was very resonant, very much a memory, almost a tribute to Christopher Reeve Superman and how much of a Boy Scout Superman is and how well that was portrayed by Christopher Reeve. Diana is that center Wonder Woman. She is that optimism and in a world without Superman, essentially in justice league for a while, not in justice league that that I was saying in the movie justice league, because that's leading to something else. But in the movie justice league, Diana kind of comes into her own and she starts to kind of take charge of this team of heroes along with Batman, of course. And, you know, it's, it's, we see her development as a character, as, as a person. And, and, and that's, what's interesting. It's not so much the very cool scene that opens the movies where she's with the bomb and she's literally just running it. Like you know, she's moving at her super fast, superhuman speed and she's deflecting all these bullets and she saves everybody. And that was, yeah, that's, that's some wonder woman type of, you know, heroic optimism and just what we really expect from Wonder Woman. And that's what we got. And I was very glad to see that, of course. And Gal Gadot really shined so much in every scene in this movie. And her being the moral compass when Bruce decides, along with the group, that we've got to bring Superman back from the dead. We've got to resurrect this person and she is very much against it she's like this is wrong this is wrong and eventually she comes around and that scene one of the best scenes he ends up not knowing who he is and the only person he really recognizes is batman and he slings him across the courtyard there by the broken statue where him and, where superman and doomsday fought and it's symbolic so much in the fact that the statue is all crumbled at his feet at uh, Clark's feet and then Clark is just fighting out in the open and that part felt good that was you know he was fighting the entire league and they really were doing their best to hold their own Aquaman all of them you know Aquaman headbutts Clark and you know didn't really phase him that much and at one point all of them were on and and one of the best parts of the movie is where Flash just super speeds around 
and he just sees Clark's eyes move, and he's kind of stunned as fast as he's going. He had no idea that Clark or Superman was that fast or almost as fast as him. And of course, you know, the mid end scene uh, towards the end of the film, after the credits in the mid part of the credits, we have that famous scene from the comic books that's been done several times over, but actually it was a running race, not a running slash flying race. But in this one, it was a running flying race and they're in the middle of nowhere essentially. And they're going to race to the West coast to find out who is the fastest man alive. And, you know, eventually it's gone both ways, but you actually, it really is the flash. He really is because he can actually through the speed force, he can open up portals and, Obviously, as we've seen on The Flash on CW on television and in comics, you know, he can essentially time travel. And yes, we've seen Superman turn the Earth backwards and the Superman movie and all that with Christopher Reeve. And, you know, so he can essentially do that, too. He's very fast, but Flash is just a little bit faster. We saw a great scene of um, Bart Allen as The Flash. Um, I don't think he was called The Flash on that one. Um it escapes me right now, his character name. But on Smallville, we saw Clark and Bart Allen racing in just when, you know, Clark's like, yeah, I've got him beat. And then all of a sudden, the guy just turns around and he just is out of there. You know, Flash is just, he was just showing off and he just left Clark in the dust. But it was a really cool moment and a nod to the comics. So we get that. And, and the Flash, along with Hawker Man, they bring a lot of comedy to this movie, a lot of levity, even Batman's toned down, like I said, which can be a good or bad thing. Probably a good thing. You know, he's mellowed out a little bit in his older age in this timeline of movies. I don't know, but he still had a badass moment with a parademon and a guy on the roof. And, you know, Danny Elfman did the music for this movie, so that was very a reminiscent scene of 1989 Batman, kind of a throwback to that. And I got that reference and I enjoyed that Batman moment. And I don't have a problem with Batman being dark. I just like my Superman bright, okay? That's just the way it's supposed to be. And honestly, we see the fact that we see Superman smiling in this and racing with the Flash and and just being more optimistic after they separate the three mother boxes, um, Cyborg and Superman, we just see them kind of both kind of from the explosion of that just kind of passed out and Superman's kind of laughing. It's like, let's not do that again. Or, or I don't want to die again. You know, there were these little jokes he put in there and, and that was good to see, you know, with Henry, um, portraying Superman and Clark Kent, it was good to see that good to see the smile, the interaction with the team there. So that went with the lighter tone of things. And I do think it works. Uh, that's definitely a pro. I kind of feel like the DCU has gone through its dark times and this is just a lighter tone. Seeing the team together and battle on the big screen versus the parademons and Steppenwolf was definitely a plus. I thought even though the CGI at times and Steppenwolf was CGI, you could kind of tell he just didn't look that impressive. I mean, you know, he basically kind of leaps and he does the thing with the hammer and then it kind of just disintegrates the earth a little bit and fire and whatever else. And that's cool. But I was hoping the whole movie and this is what gets me to, well, before I get to that, let me talk about, I've got to talk about an, an end credit scene um, before I get to the biggest con of all in this movie. Not that we were conned, and not that I thought this would happen in the movie, but we'll get to that in just a second, okay? But what I'm talking about first, let's talk about the end scene with Lex Luthor. They go to jail, they see that that's not Luthor. Then you see this yacht, this little boat go up to this big yacht, and it's Lex Luthor on there. And then in full costume, you see Deathstroke. And you and he takes off his helmet. And basically, this is what we're seeing, the formation of what my generation would call the Legion of Doom. But more than likely, it's going to be the Injustice League. Okay? 
the Injustice League. So, you know, Lex Luthor's like, well, Superman's back, so I'm putting together a team. He put together a team. I'm putting together a team. Actually, Batman put the team together. And uh, But here is, and there's probably some more pros in there, and I know I mix my pros and cons up a little bit, but those are kind of the pros of Justice League. I would like to see it maybe in IMAX, maybe IMAX 3D. It, it might enhance how it looks. And I think the fight sequences went well. It's just, but there were a lot of choppy things and a choppy things with the plot too. So, but let's get to the cons. The biggest con of all, and nowhere in the marketing did it say this character was going to appear. But somehow, some way, I just knew that this character was going to show up. I don't care if they did a whole Thanos kind of reveal, but you know what I'm talking about, Dark Side. And I guess if we get a Justice League 2, it'll be Dark Side. I thought once the Mother Boxes came together and Steppenwolf had done that successfully that we would get the portal and then at least dark side would come down. And if the movie ended that way, I know they had to have a happy ending to it. So it couldn't have, but I don't know. You, you could have done so much more if dark side would have just shown up or we could have seen his face or just any kind of nod. Was he mentioned in the movie? Yes. Dark side was mentioned. Did we see him? Did we get any hints or any clues? We got hints and clues, but, but we didn't actually see him and I needed to see dark side in this. Had he just shown up at the end or after the end credits, they could have just had the end scene. They could have added another end scene or just, you know, it's fine with the Lex Luthor scene that, that sets up a lot of possibly suicide squad two. It sets up possibly a justice league two or injustice league movie, whatever. But Seeing Dark Side, the whole reason would have been worth the price of admission for me. Seeing Dark Side, so I was upset when there was no Dark Side. That was my biggest disappointment of them all. Was no Dark Side. I don't even know how to say that, but other than to say it again, that there was no Dark Side. So if you're going looking for Dark Side, you're going to get Steppenwolf, who's an mm, okay kind of character. Kind of reminds me of the Blah characters that in the second Thor movie there. You know, just thinking of Thor because Thor is relative to my mind. And not Ragnarok, of course. But, but you know, the character of Steppenwolf, they maybe could have explored more of his past. Of course, that would have made it a longer movie, you know. I don't know. But I just wish I would have seen Darkseid. Another con in this movie was Superman's mustache. And because he was contracted to Mission Impossible 6, which I'm excited about, you know, they can have Mission Impossible 10 as long as he's got Tom Cruise in there doing what Tom Cruise does so well, then I'm on board pretty much. But he has a mustache in there. And so they digitally removed that mustache and, it made his lip look funny. And like when I saw Superman, I didn't know if, if Henry had, you know, I know it's been years and had he, had they changed him somehow, but I think digitally it was that whole upper lip of his. And, you know, there's memes out there full of, you know, Henry's <laughs> mustache there. Just, uh, it's crazy. You could create these parademons. You could CGI Steppenwolf, and yeah, I had some problems with that, but still, you could do that almost convincingly, but you couldn't remove some hairs on the, your upper lip there. Actually, there were a lot of them. You know, you couldn't do the mustache just right. It just made his face, that part, just look so strange. And, you know, especially if you were in motion, but even then, you know, you can, you can, there's ways to hide things digitally and stuff, but they didn't do a great job with that. I was a little disappointed with that. For me, it, it actually took me out of the movie for a second and I'm like, okay, something's wrong. Superman doesn't look right. And, uh, mainly this is, you know, when we see him resurrected, obviously, and, and with the fight, the Justice League. But then after a while, you're like, okay, he's just fighting everybody. And, you know, it, it was pretty cool, but the mustache wasn't 
so yeah, like I said, the CGI didn't work in some of the scenes. Some of the newer film scenes didn't seem to mess with some of the original. It just seemed like the the lighting, the tone didn't match. It felt like as much as Batman versus Superman felt like three separate scripts uh, smashed together into one movie, which I didn't mind as much. They covered a lot of ground. That was about two or three really good possible movies that they crunched together and and all that. But the thing was, in Justice League, it just felt like there were rewrites and the, and 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 there were just stuff with the script that just didn't have that cohesion to it, and it bothered me to a degree. I just I tried to put some of that out of my mind and say, okay, you know, enjoy this for what it is. And and I went in with an open mind. I, were my expectations kind of high? Yes, they were. They've been they've been high for a while, but I've tried purposely, like I'm trying extremely hard and you don't know how difficult it is for me not to buy into any of the spoilers or anything on The Last Jedi. My wife keeps going around saying that, yeah, Luke's going to the dark side and like, stop it, stop it, stop it. I don't want to hear that. And whether he does or doesn't, you know, I'm going to like it anyway, or hopefully I will. Hopefully there'll be nothing in The Last Jedi that won't upset me. I really think it's going to be Better than The Force Awakens. I think the fact that Ryan Johnson has now got a trilogy beyond the Skywalker, beyond Episode Nine, they are letting him at this point helm a new trilogy in a different part of the universe, not connected to the Skywalker family, is interesting. So we can bring in all new characters and you're not, you know, chained down to all this lore of the Skywalker family. You You've essentially got some of the rules but you can rewrite some of those rules and, you know, you can put it in a different time frame versus the Skywalkers. They could be in the same universe or different part of the universe or whatever, you know, but you're not held to the canon as much as you are with eight and nine. You know, you can't call it episode seven, eight, nine and not be part of the, everything that's come before essentially, even though, with the force awakens and maybe last Jedi. I don't know. They basically tried to say, Disney's tried to say, Hey, don't look over there at those prequels. You know, I respect the prequels. I give them more credit than some people do. And especially episode three, I think they got better. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily true, but I definitely liked episode three. And, um, I liked rogue one, even though, uh, it was a little bit, I don't know. It was, it, there were parts that I could pick that apart a little bit, but it's Star Wars still. It's, it's like cold pizza. I'm still going to love it. But anyway, with Justice League here, I think that it, the storyline was a little, as a con, like I said, was uneven. And I actually think that Batman versus Superman was just a little bit more cohesive. Even with those three storylines, I felt it felt like one film. It felt like one visual vision of things, you know, and this Justice League felt different. It felt like there were parts of it that weren't in that same vein. So it's kind of hard to, to it's it's almost apples and oranges and you can't ignore what happened in Dawn of Justice Batman versus Superman and then just go pivot straight to a oh a lighter tone in Justice League you have to kind of tie those things together and they did to an extent but I wish they could have done more with it and we'll have to I guess wait and see until maybe there is a director's cut or a um different version of it because actually what would have been more exciting some of the rumors I was hearing that originally that they Justice League was going to be the birth rebirth or whatever resurrection of Superman he was going to come back in the black suit he was going to be all ticked off kind of going crazy against the world possibly and then the Justice League would have to unite to basically and he'd be most hostile at Bruce probably of all people but still uh, for maybe even bringing him back, but 
it just seemed like that story arc would have been interesting to see Superman just let loose and go crazy and more destruction. But people were kind of over the darkness of Batman versus Superman that it went so dark, even though there were hopeful moments in it. But in changing the tone of the film, they had to skip over all that. I understand Cyborg's character. Like I said, his backstory was pretty much washed over. So, you know, it'll even if we get a Cyborg movie at this point because of how poor Lee, it's perceived that a $98 million opening, one of the lowest in the DCU for a movie, is considered pretty much a disappointment. It's up to the world market, the international market, essentially, to save this movie. This movie's probably got to do the $800 million or so to at least kind of break even. And I don't even know that this movie can break even. I'm hoping... At the recording of this during uh, Thanksgiving week, I hope that Justice League flourishes in its second week. And it's got, you know, a couple weeks before Jedi comes out in December. So The Last Jedi is going to obviously take all the box office. We already know that. So Justice League has to hit the ground and it's got to make up for lost revenue and it's got to make money because if it doesn't, Hollywood's not going to make another one. Warner Brothers is not going to jump back into this. Uh, DC is not going to want to go down this route again, which I believe would be a mistake, but I don't know. You know, if we get a Flashpoint movie, which it was hinted at, which I don't know that'll happen now because of this, we may end up, instead of trying to build that whole continuity, like we built up 10 years from Iron Man to Infinity War next year, and then... Avengers 4, essentially, we built up all the... Marvel did it perfectly, but maybe DC's at this point going to say, okay, we don't need an ensemble movie. Let's go and just do the solo movies. And yeah, we can connect or loosely connect this universe, say that they're in the same universe. And then once we get those established, then maybe we can come back years from now, 2020 or after that and do a justice league versus dark side and have all of our characters in there. And by then we'll have green lantern, uh, some sort, hopefully in there, which that's still in question. Aquaman will ha have had his movie, obviously wonder woman. The second one's going to happen regardless of whatever happens, any fallout. We already know that that's coming. And, uh, Patty Jenkins is going to bring a, us a great movie, I believe. But going beyond that, I don't know if Cyborg is going to make it, but if we get a Flashpoint movie, that could totally redo. It could erase everything in canon, essentially, and, and take us on a different trajectory. There's a, a way to write that into the universe so that to, into the DCU so we can kind of say, okay, Batman versus Superman never really happened. That was an alternate reality. Or the fact that Justice League, where they say, I don't even... I think Alfred says, I don't even recognize this world. And then Bruce says, well, we don't have to recognize it. We just have to save it. So that I think they're really saying about the film is like, we've really, Jeremy Irons, we've got to save this. I'm Ben Affleck. We've got to help save this movie. And Jeremy Irons has been vocal to the fact that he didn't really care for Batman versus Superman. And I don't think he's, I think he'd be happy to be out of it. I, I don't know. But um, that's a different discussion, obviously, for a different time. So there are a lot of things that I'm probably going to think of more things, and I'll probably mention in future episodes, I'll mention about pros and cons of Justice League. But bottom line, should you go out and see it? Yes, it's a fun movie, especially if you've grown up waiting your whole life to see all these heroes together on screen. Aquaman finally kicks ass. Thank you, Jason, for that. And... Um, Barry Allen's Flash, awesome. He's one of the better parts of the movie itself. The Flash character is just so funny and just so good. And even the naivety and, the, and how he comes into his own as a hero with the advice or, or the mentorship in a way very quickly of Batman. And whether Ben Affleck comes back or not, I think he's done a very good Bruce Wayne, a very good Batfleck, okay? Definitely up there is one of the best. And I just, I don't know where we go from here. I'm more confused. I, I think they're going to sit around and wait a couple weeks and look at the dollars and finally see what this film at the end of the year by what it's made. And, and 
there's going to be some big decisions. And I think they're definitely going with the lighter tone, but they're going to listen to the fans. And the fans, I don't know if they're so... There is a division still. The critics really didn't love this movie. And uh, some of them thought it was better than the last one. And the last one, Donna Justice, they really, the critics really went crazy on it. I enjoyed it. A lot of the fans enjoyed it. And this one's supposed to be better. So everybody thinks it's better, but it's still, there's just that hanging over its head, Justice League, that it's just not as good as it could have been. And I just, I feel it's disjointed. There's just parts of it just upset me. And it angers me, too. It made me angry and, you know, Hulk angry. But I was just upset. There are so many things they could have done in this movie that they didn't do. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that inspires the next movie and gets gets everyone excited for the next one. I don't know. So hopefully you'll go out and see Justice League. I want to say go out there, support this movie. Let's make this a success. If we want to keep seeing these movies, guess what? We have to go watch them. But our dollars also speak, too. If we don't go out and watch them, they're not going to make them. They're going to say, okay, we don't need that. But this, if this movie doesn't succeed, like I said, if Wonder Woman wasn't a success, and it was way a big success and such an important movie, not just to DC Universe, but to female superheroes carrying the lead finally on a big-budget movie, and so we're going to see a lot more from Wonder Woman in there. We need to take a cue from that, but I don't want everyone to copy the Wonder Woman formula necessarily in the DCU. Each character has to have their own unique movie. Flash needs a movie. And yeah, we'll get the origin story. I know, just like Spider-Man. But Spider-Man Homecoming pretty much said, okay, we, we get that. You know, we can do that in the sequel. And, and I like that they just kind of skipped over that. You know, I... I don't mind an origin story for The Flash. We see, we can see it on TV and the comics. I just want it to be good, and I want it to break some new ground. And that's what DC needs to do. They need to break new ground. They need to develop this Injustice League, as it were. And we need to have some powerful villains to face off against a powerful Justice League. So... Anyway, go out and see Justice League, and thank you for listening to this episode. Please let us know on YouTube, Geek Home World, and you can especially reach us at Geek Home World on Twitter, at Geek Home World there. Check us out on our Lipson site. That's where we host the uh, website here, and I want to thank everybody for listening and everybody that's been commenting, and uh, we've got so much more fun things to come, and... So as I'm recording this, it's the day before Thanksgiving. I've kind of procrastinated thinking about what I was going to say. But I just want to say happy Thanksgiving to all of you out there that celebrate that and to those countries that may not. You know, I just wish you all the best. So I wish everyone the best. And so let's unite the seven and let's unite the eight if we have to and bring in not just Green Lantern, but let's bring in Martian Manhunter, okay? Um, Martian Manhunter, please. <laughs> Alrighty. Anyway, so thanks for listening and take care. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Geek Homeworld with your host, Savage Tech Man. You can find us on Libsyn, Google Plus. Follow and interact with us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Listen to us on iTunes and leave a review. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Read our thoughts on Blogger. See you again on the Geek Home World.